Hi, and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. We're live. It's Sunday. Sunday. How did that happen? I don't know. It was Saturday yesterday. It was Friday the day before. Who knows? Anyway, we got one! Yes, today we are going to be building this. The Lego Ghostbusters Ecto-1 UCS style set. And this is based on the Ghostbusters Afterlife... What? what? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. This is the Lego Ghostbusters Ecto-1 UCS style set that we're going to be building tonight. And oh my gosh, ain't she a beauty? I am so chuffed to have this on day one. Oh my god, it was a stressful experience. But I'll talk about that in my vlog. And if you can hear some strange sounds in the background, it's because someone's there not fireworks. So I apologize for that. Nothing I can do about it apart from maybe go out there and stomp on all their toys. I don't know. Anyway, so this is set number 10274. Totally didn't have to check then. And oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. If you're at all familiar with my channel, you'll know I'm a massive, massive Ghostbusters fan. It is my absolute favorite movie of all time. It's been with me through thick and thin. I have never, ever, ever had a Ghostbusters Dark Age. Even when I was acting all cool and trying to pull girls and like, hey, I don't like Lego. No, that's for geeks. I'm a cool guy. I could never, ever deny Ghostbusters. It was something that I just couldn't let go of. And I still can't. But here we have the second, technically, Ecto-1 Lego set. I say technically because I've actually built three of these now. I've built the original Lego Ghost, but Lego Ideas Ghostbusters Ecto-1. And then I've done two custom mocks based on that build of the Ecto-1A from Ghostbusters 2 and the original Black Miller Meteor Cadillac that they get and before they convert it into the Ectomobile. And cheeky plug, if you haven't already, be sure to check those videos out. They're a bit old now, so they might be a bit cringy, even more cringy than I am now. But, you know, we live and we learn. But right now, let's get stuck into this. Nurse? Scalpel? Aha. Okay. I haven't even opened this yet, so this way it could all go wrong and I just lose a finger. Can you imagine? How many subscribers do you reckon I'll get if I lose a finger? Oh, look at this. Lots of bags. Do you know what? I don't actually see a white box in here. Normally sets these size have a white box and that has all the loan number bags in. This time, no, I've just seen bag. There's bag one there. And the other thing I haven't seen yet is the manual. Please don't give me a crumpled manual. Oh my God. If I get a crumpled manual, I'm gonna flip. Uh, let me just get these out and then I'll have a look in the chat over in chat land. And see who we got in Chatland. I don't know why I'm saying it like Chatland. Do you like the way I'm saying chat? I'm going to stop now. Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. I don't know if that's about back enough. But it's in like a special cardboard envelope. Okay. I should have just tipped this up. This is taking way too long already. Well, yeah, you did that for the last bag, don't you, Mrs. Craggle? Now you're knocking the lights now. Wow. Women. Anyway, um, okay, where's my scalpel gone? I need to open this now. We can't afford the actual music, so we just have to pretend. Oh, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, no. Oh, no, the stickers. I hate stickers. 
And that looks to me like they're all... Oh, they're all clear back ones. Oh, my God, the Ecto-1? They didn't print that this time? Oh, infidels. Why? Okay, at least the Ghostbusters logo, I think, is printed. But look at this. I love how they've done that. That's like one of those... Oh, what's it called? The manual... Instruction owner's manual is a certain brand that does all vehicles and stuff. In fact, I have... Haynes, there you go. Mrs. Crackle just told me. It's like the Haynes owner instruction manuals that you get for cars. She's just knocked over the box. It's it's all going wrong. Where's that? There you go. Kind of similar. Yeah, maybe. A little bit. I don't know. What do you think? I think so. Okay, right. Um, well, tell you what. Mrs. Crackle, I'm going to put you to work. You can uh, get sorted. Sorting... The saucy stuff, the bags. And uh, let's put the camera down so we can start to see the pieces. Well, I am going to go over and have a look in old chat land. I should have asked already. Can you hear me okay? I hope so. Well, let's have a look. Let's see who we've got here. Uh, let's have a look. Go right from the top. We've got Anne Marie Green. We've got Brick Tony, Antony, Antony, Antony Montana, but let's go refugee. I don't know. We've got I See Dead People 35. We've got Brick Binder. We've got Nate P, The Reef. We've got Tazy Vids, Christopher Mitz, Robotnik Studios. I like that name. It's kind of like Robotnik, only Robotnik. You're being very noisy. <laughs> okay. we got Pierre Mike. We've got Seth Bland. Bland, and I think... Oh, wait a sec. My chat's updating. Oh, we've got Brick Tony. I've already said hello, Brick Tony. Hello there, yourself. Oh, wow. It's... Oh, no. Okay, someone else said hello. Julia... Julio Zafra Gonzalez. Gonzalez? Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Julio Zafra Gonzalez. I got there in the end. Sorry about that. I'm terrible. I can't pronounce even basic stuff, so... Give me a name with more than one vowel, and uh, yeah, you're in for disaster. Oh, and Daniel Smith is here as well. So let's see what everyone is saying. Daniel Smith, the latest comment, says, Order mine. I can't wait for it to arrive. Yeah, I was I was going to order mine as well. Um, I was going to wait until next week when double VIP points are on offer, and also there's the, uh, the Charles Dickens promo. And last night... Just after, well, no, it was just before midnight. The missus said to me, Sorry, I'm just trying to adjust my mic, but it's failing miserably. Okay, we want to adjust the mic, we'll leave it as it is. Oh, have you seen that the actor one is now live? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait a week. And she said, Well, have you seen that there's a Ghostbusters poster print? To which I said, No. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, I want that. Is that still going to be available next week when Double VIP comes out? And then before she could even answer, I was like, well, it's probably going to sell out anyway in that week. They'll run out of stock. And then she dropped the bombshell that, yeah, not even that. The offer on the, the print, the poster, ends the day before Double VIP and the Charles Dickens promo. I mean, come on. Come on. Why do they do this to us? They're so evil, Lego. But anyway, I I was already in my heart wanting to get this day one. I mean, I'm a huge, huge, huge Ghostbusters fan. So, you know, how could I, you know, look myself in the mirror when I wake up in the morning and brush my teeth if I didn't get this day one? Yeah, couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. Anyway, let's have a quick look, see what everyone else is saying in the chat. Uh, let's see. Brick Tony says, Thoughts on the Coliseum, Crago. Oh, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't think it's a good looking set anyway. I think it looks like it's going to be one of the most mundane builds in existence. But it also kind of irks me that they won't do something like Notre Dame, which is a beautiful, beautiful historical building. And the reason they won't do it is because it has, as a cathedral, religious connotations. Okay, 
fair enough. Don't really agree with that, but okay. I mean, I agree that, yeah, it's a cathedral, but, you know, people visit it from all different beliefs, all different backgrounds, and go there just to see, you know, this beautiful, magnificent piece of architecture. But, you know, if Lego wants to take that stance, that's their business. But then, whilst they won't make a cathedral because of religious stuff, they go and make a coliseum, the coliseum, which was the site of mass murder for entertainment with many of the people basically just well, literally fed to the lines there were done so because of their race, their status and their religion. So it's OK to make a place that was a site of religious persecution but not a site of religious worship. It just it just ma it makes no sense to me. But anyway, <laughs> I could talk about that for hours and end up ranting everyone's ears off. But we're here for the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Oh, that's a really pretty manual. I like that. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Oh, look at this. Oh, man. This is going to be awkward now. Can you see? Is the actual one as cool as it is to see it in the trailer for Afterlife? It does kind of hurt my soul to see all the disrepair. I'm I'm sure some of it, I hope some of it, is just cosmetic that they've added on for the film because I know they did restore uh, the original car. There's Ray there with the original black Cadillac. That's the one I also did in my um, yeah I made that out of the Lego set. Ecto 1A as well. Oh, this is going to be a great build. And that is a picture of it now. So one of the main differences in the Ecto 1 as it appears in the Afterlife, or in Afterlife, is the ladder of switch sides. When the first teaser came out, I think a lot of fans were kicking off going, where's the ladder? But basically, it has switch sides so at some point there's been modifications done although a lot of people are saying well shouldn't this look like the ecto 1a from ghostbusters 2 yeah but really in the original ghostbusters 2 with some of the deleted scenes the ecto 1a or ecto 2 it was as it was originally in the original script was meant to be a different vehicle so i think that's what they're going with with ghostbusters afterlife saying that this is ecto 1 from the first movie that's been modified and the Actor 1A was a different car. So, who knows? I'm sure it'll be explained. Or maybe not. <laughs> It'd be either one of those things that they explain really well, or they just completely ignore. Where are you going with those pieces? Because I need to put the manual out. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're having a little bit of a tiff here. <laughs> Uh, Jack Allen says, when is the Christmas Carol promo available? I believe it is available from next week. From next Saturday? Is that Saturday, right? Yeah. yeah. Just... Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Um, I'm going to allow this comment, but I think Sai O'Connor did a typo because he's just told me to suck a nice manual, dude. Well, Sai, I thought we were friends. And now you come and you say something like that. Okay, then. Brick Tony says the creator expert Crackle Beard just got announced and it comes with 10,000 brown tiles. So it's the largest Lego set ever. Only 10,000? Well, it's not the scale, then, is it? Clearly. Uh, Rampage and Elephant, do you think we'll get more Ghostbusters sets along with this set, or do you think this will be the only one? Well, the thing is, the rumor I was hearing, whoa, back at the start of this year, back at the start of 2020, was that there was going to be a wave of minifig scale sets based on Ghostbusters Afterlife. I heard there was going to be four in total of like different sizes. I think one was going to be like 17 99 to 20 quid one, um, 30 quid. I don't think there was anything massively expensive. I'm not sure if they, if they said there was going to be one that was going to breach the £100 or $100 mark. But yeah, I heard there was going to be four sets based on the movie, although one rumour, one source that backed that up but also contradicted it a little bit said that not all four of the sets will be based on the new movie. 
Meaning, were they going to then also have like two sets based on the new movie and then a set based on Ghostbusters 1 and a set based on Ghostbusters 2? I don't know. That would be really cool. I would love to see some more Ghostbusters sets. I mean, that's part of the reason why I kept making some of my own because I wanted more of them. One thing that I would really, really love to see is a brick built Stay Puft. There was one that was made on Lego Ideas. I think, yeah, it was made by the same guy who built the Lego Ideas Ghostbusters Ecto 1. And it got to 10,000 and it got rejected. It got, you know, not approved, which I was really gutted about. So I'm hoping that we'll see something like that in the future because, you know, there was a Firehouse one. That didn't get approved, but we got a firehouse. There was the whole thing with the Jurassic Park gates. Got 10,000, didn't get approved, but then we got it anyway, kind of. Um, so, yeah, I'm hopeful. The re One of the things that's kind of linked to LEGO Hidden Side, I heard, is that the reason we got a third wave of Hidden Side is because it was meant to fill the gap that would have been LEGO Ghostbusters in the summer. So, originally, we were going to have four... Well, I guess maybe five, or if this is one of the ones out of the four. We have potentially four or maybe five Ghostbuster, Lego Ghostbuster sets this summer. Because the film was getting pushed back, they delayed those sets and basically did a third wave of Lego Hinside. That's why that there's not really much tying in with the third wave. It has an all-new villain. It was basically other stuff that the designers had developed, but it wasn't really going to be produced so soon. And was kind of basically a last minute or like a mid-season replacement, if you will. And now Hinside is ending this year because Ghostbusters is going to come on shelves then in 2021. And apparently Hinside isn't actually like retiring completely, but going on hiatus because they don't want to have two supernatural based themes on shelves at the same time. So potentially Hinside could come back in the second half of 2021 or the start of 2022. I don't know. I've heard quite a few people say in that rumor. I've not seen a lot of evidence to back it up, but it has come from different sources. But, you know, you heard it through the grapevine. Anyway. Anyway, I want to go on and start building this. I'm really excited. So I'm going to start putting some bricks together. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and try and talk uh, to you all as much as I can. But I am super excited to get building this. In fact, I can see one question, actually, uh, from Pierre Mac, who says, are you sad there are no minifigures? Uh, yes. I'm, well, I don't know if sad's the right word. I'm definitely a little bit disappointed. I feel like, you know, my idea when this was kind of leaked, or, you know, that it was leaked that there was going to be this set, was that it would be like the... UCS uh, 89 Batmobile. So I thought we'd get a stand with some minifigures. Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, but we've already had the four Ghostbusters twice now in the Ecto-1 Lego Idea set and also in the Firehouse. But this is based on Afterlife, so it would have been good to get some of the new characters um, like uh, Phoebe um, and Paul Rudd's character maybe. But hopefully, if we are getting those other minifig scale sets next year, we'll get the minifigures with that. And I'm sure people will do their own custom stands. There'll be you know, third-party sellers that will make stickers like the UCS style so you can put on a plaque and have it you know, on a, on a display like the uh, 89 Batmobile. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for one of those. I mean, I'm so happy that they've made this set because I've seen an Ecto-1 of this scale at Comic-Cons and conventions alongside um, a Lego DeLorean in a similar scale, which I hope they make next, and also Kit from Knight Rider. So they're the two that I hope they make next in this scale. Hopefully, you know, this does really well, and, you know, they will consider it. I mean, the one thing this has going for it is that it has a new film coming out. I don't believe there's a new Back to the Future film coming out anytime soon. At least I hope not, because that would ruin it. I've just dropped the piece. Where did it go? We're going to have to cut the stream short. I just dropped a piece, and it's gone into the abyss of the floor. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Where did it go? It? Yeah, I'm really, really, really hoping that we'll get a uh, a DeLorean set in this scale soon. They'll probably wait a while to see how this set do, do, uh, does, I feel, but... You got it? Uh -huh. There you go. This is why you all need to get yourself a girlfriend or fiancé, so that when you drop stuff on the floor, they can go get it for you. Whoa, don't hit me. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, I take it back. I should have said that. Loves you. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was I doing here now? I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I know, but... Ah, oh, there you go. Wait, what? what? Okay. I put that on the wrong way around. I got confused. Don't bully me. I'm on a live stream here. You can't bully me in front of all my, uh, you know, my fans, and my peeps, my peoples. No, you can't do that. Okay, yeah, you can. <laughs> um, Barry Brasso says, so "Would you have preferred a stay, a stay puffy, a stay puff marshmallow man, or this?" Um, that's difficult to say because I would love to have a stay puffed, you know, reasonably minifig scale to go alongside my firehouse and have, you know, the Ghostbusters battle in that. But this is such an amazing set. I mean, I, I presume it is. It looks gorgeous. That. I can't really complain about getting this. I was talking to one of my Lego store buddies when I picked this up, and he said, and he's not even a Ghostbusters fan. He likes Ghostbusters, but, you know, he's not a diehard fan like me. And he said that he built the display model for the store, and it was one of the the best builds he's ever built. So that's, that's high praise. Hello, Generic Stud. Great to have you here. Um, what else we got saying here? Sayo Connor, my typo was worse. Oh, okay. What are we saying? What other typos have we got? I mean, I've already been told to suck a nice manual. Oh, stay puffy. Yeah, we, that's fine. I'd rather someone say stay puffy than tell me to suck a nice manual. I mean, come on. I thought Sai was my friend. Wow. Always goes to show you, you can't trust the Irish. I should not have said that. Just upset a whole country now. I joke. I like the Irish. Fellow Celts. It's the English I can't stand. <laughs> the missus is English, so she's just giving me the most evil look there right now. I love everyone. It's not true. I hate everyone. I hate everyone universally. I'm not prejudiced. I can't stand anyone. <laughs> I shouldn't say that when you've got a YouTube channel and you rely on people watching your videos. Oh, well. It was quite funny, though, because as stressful as it was going to the shopping center today um, to get this, I mean, it was it was so, so stressful. I hadn't realized, like an idiot, that it was like the first Christmas shock. Uh, Christmas shocking? It was shocking. Christmas shopping weekend since we had the national lockdown here in Wales. So, like, everyone was going there to get all their Christmas goodies that they normally get in the October half term. And it was just pandemonium. It was just, it was so, so stressful. But it did make me realise that, actually, I did miss going into town, going to the Lego store, seeing, like, the guys in the Lego store, just being in town and, you know, being able to browse the shops and... Then sort of like, you know, we went past one of our favorite restaurants and it smelled so, so good. And I was like, oh, I'm hungry now. Which is funny because I've been saying all along that I could quite easily become a hermit as long as I have Lego and I have um, internet, you know. I'm happy to stay at home. I haven't missed that much of the outside world. And I guess today I realized that I missed, I missed the outside world a little bit more than perhaps I thought I did. So, you know, hopefully in the new year, because we start to get a handle on things, we can get back to some level of normalcy. Uh, Sir Chebster says, I think there's quite a high chance we will get a UCS DeLorean. I've seen some rumors floating about YouTube and Reddit. I really hope so. I would love it. When I um, went to, was it London Film and Comic Con? Was it last year or the year before? That was the one where they had the Millennium Falcon, where it has like the blue trans like bricks for the, I guess the hyper, it's not, no, it's not hyperspace, but like the trail coming out of basically this giant 
um, Moss Eisley build. And in that sort of area where they had lots of like Lego builders with their mocks, they had an Ecto-1 kind of this scale. They had a DeLorean and they had Kit Knight Rider. And I was like, I would buy all three of these if these were actual sets. And, you know, it, it, does, it did look pretty close to this one. I wish I'd filmed it. I took some photographs on my phone. I didn't film it for some reason, even though I filmed the Falcon. And I don't know where those photographs went. So I went to sort of look at them and post them on Instagram, and they weren't there. <laughs> so I, I don't know what happened. My phone decided they were just too epic for public to see. Uh, Christopher Mitch says they should do the DeLorean sooner than later to try and cash in, in the 30th, 35th anniversary of the movie. Yeah, that's the thing. Like this year is the 35th anniversary, and there's been lots of Back to the Future tie in merchandise. Funko, have, in particular, have knocked it out of the park with like their Back to the Future range this year. Um, so it's been a shame that we haven't seen anything from Lego in that regards. I mean, Playmobil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, everyone's just like, I'll just lose all my viewers now. Yeah, but Playmobil, they've done stuff. They've got the Back to the Future advent calendar. They had DeLorean. They did like a minifig, uh, not minifigure, Playmobil figure. What are Playmobil figures called? Playmobil figs? I don't know. Play fig? That sounds dodgy. <laughs> I don't know. They had a pack of those. But Lego, we didn't get anything. And I think it's a bit late now to actually you know, get anything from them for this year. My worry is now that they'll leave it to the 40th anniversary and we'll have to wait, like, God, another five years now until we get something. Have I done this wrong? No, just their way of doing it is weird. There we go. pull up. But yeah, I mean... How many of you would like to see a uh, a Lego DeLorean in this scale, like a UCS type scale, or a kit? Do, do any of you know what Knight Rider is? Do you remember? Do you remember Knight Rider the show, and the car kit had like the red light at the front that went, and the car talked. No, I'm showing my age now. Sai, back me up, man. Sai, Sai, come on, back me up. He's not here. He just came in to insult me and then left. <laughs> it's like, yo, suck a manual, dude. Or I'll pop a cap in your ass. And then he left. That's how the Irish talk now. It's the mm -hmm. 21st century. Okay. They're done with leprechauns now. Sorry. Okay, Sai so says Kit is awesome. I know you spelt it with one T. <laughs> Seth Bland knows what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Kit would be an auto purchase, definitely. They owe Paul, I'm going to try and see your name right. To my, to, uh, Paul, that was a good show. Yes, it was. It was an amazing show. Oh, okay. So Chepster says, I've been wanting the DeLorean for years. I assumed they would just make one for 2015 in line with Back to the Future 2. Yeah, that was a bit weird. They didn't do anything for that either. I mean, when was the DeLorean come out? Was that 2012? 2011, I thought. Oh, I forget now. It was around the sort of like as I was coming out my dark age, the DeLorean came out. It was like the first proper set I got out of my dark age. I was already starting to dabble and pick up a few poly bags and many figures. Um, but that was the first proper set I had bought in a long time. 2013. 2013. Wow, that is mental. Yeah. I honestly, yeah, it's just. It's weird, isn't it, when like fans can come up with better sort of tie-ins than these companies that have millions of pounds to spend on marketing. Like, I know this is completely off topic, but one thing that always bugged me is how we never got a James Bond film in 2007. We got a James Bond film in 2006, and we got a James Bond film in 2008. But we didn't get one in 2007. In 2007. The year was 2007, and we didn't get a James Bond film. They're literally going to have to wait another thousand years before they can do that again. I mean, come on. The marketing was right there for them. It's just, ah, oh, I don't know. I reckon, like, fans should be in charge of stuff like that. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> we all just disagree on stuff. 
Ah, uh, this is going to be tricky. Trying to get all these lined up. Okay, that bit's in. Oh, okay, that bit's not now. There we go. So we have, I think, the main base of the frame there. It's starting to look like something. Not necessarily a car, but it's starting to look like something. Uh, Say, O'Connor, I was under pressure. <laughs> you were under pressure. What, when you told me to suck a manual or when you spelled kit with one T? <laughs> hey, Bricklick is here. Uh, yeah, that is sad, sad bland. You know, it, it's just such like a missed opportunity. It does make me sad that there was no James Bond film in 2007. It's just, oh, I don't know. I'm going massively off topic. <laughs> oh, are you all excited for the uh, the new movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife? I'll be honest. When I first heard the name Ghostbusters Afterlife, I thought it was fake. I don't know why. I mean, I think it's a bit of a grower because when I first heard it, I was like, well, that's clearly a fake title. And then it was announced it was the actual title. And I was like, oh, well, okay. I don't hate it. But as time's gone on, I have really, really like the title now. But... Yeah, like it was weird when I first heard it. I, I don't know why. I think a lot of people honestly thought it was going to be called Ghostbusters 2020 because that was what the hashtag I think um, Jason Reitman was using even when he first announced it. Obviously, because it was meant to come out in 2020. Can you imagine if they had called the film Ghostbusters 2020 and now because of Corona, they had to delay it? I mean, Ghostbusters 2020 sounds quite cool. Ghostbusters 2021 doesn't really have the same ring to it. So I'm really glad they didn't call it that now. Plus there'll be some people going, yo, where is the other 1,997 Ghostbuster movies in between Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbusters 2020? And I just realized I did the math wrong on that. Oh. <laughs> this is why I'm a YouTuber and not a mathematician. I got built two of these, so another math fail. Oh, well. You don't come here for the maths, do you? You do. Oh, oops. Uh, let's see. Um, Christmas, yes on Afterlife. Sir Chepster, the trailer looked fan-made. I can't lie. Really? I didn't think the, tra the trailer looked fan-made. I mean, do you mean that in a bad way? Like you thought the production values on it looked terrible? Or... I thought it looked really good. I admit, when I first saw that teaser and it had the original Ghostbusters score as it went through like that field at night... And then you heard someone trying to start up a proton pack and then the wind then blew off the uh, the tarp on the back of the Ecto. I got goosebumps. I was like, oh, yes, now we're talking. I was so, so excited. Uh, Joshua Silvester says, hey, I'm in the UK and my year group have just been put into lockdown, just finished Lego Hinside High School. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, a lot of schools in Cardiff have been put into into lockdown as well. It's like we're out of the national lockdown here in Wales, but the virus is still, for lack of a better term, running rampant. So it was really stressful when I went into the city centre today. When I say town, we call our city centre town going into town. It's a British thing. I don't know if anyone else does it outside of Wales, to be honest with you. But um there were people like without wearing masks, even though there were signs saying you had to wear masks in the shopping center. There were people wearing it under their nose. There were people wearing it under their chins. One guy was wearing it on top of his hat. Top of his hat, sorry, on top of his head. <laughs> on top of his hat. But he was wearing it like a hat. It was just like, oh, it was so, so stressful. It was unbelievable. But, you know, I'm glad I went because I got this amazing set. And the, the Lego Hinside High School, I I have a mixed a mixed relationship. No, I, I have mixed feelings about that set. I don't know if you've watched my review video, but I really like the set. But I feel like its potential was cut short because they built so much of the play feature with the, the sort of claws coming out and the eyes popping up and everything that... As I was building it, I was like, whoa, there's not going to be a lot of space in this school. Like, the rooms have a lot of depth to them. I was like, that's great, because so many builds nowadays are, like, two studs deep. You have to have a minifigure with a leg hanging off the edge. So I was going, this is going to be awesome. And then 
you start filling those spaces with the mechanism for the claws and stuff to jump out, and it just kind of killed it for me. I still think it looked really good from the front, and the play feature having those jump out was cool and all, but personally, I would have preferred it if they had left some of that, that stuff off and had those rooms as areas where you could you know, pose minifigures and play and like have you know some set dressing or something like that. Uh, Sly goes, I'm heading off Krakow. Will you have guests on during the week? Uh, I don't know yet. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a series of this or try and build it all in one live stream. I'm not going to build this in one live stream, am I? Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. But if you want to join, you're, you're always welcome. Just give me a message on Instagram, and uh, I can send you a link, and you can come and join. Uh, let's see. Uh, dude, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, says digital always comes across as TV movie-ish. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, I prefer stuff shot mainly on film. There are instances where I've been amazed at what they could pull off with digital, where it looks like you couldn't tell the difference. You'd have to be really, really sort of like looking hard. Um, yeah, I read something about them using some anamorphic lenses to give it a filmic look. So, yeah, let's see. I thought it looked pretty good. It's always hard to tell. One thing I was pleased about is that they haven't... Well, at least I don't think they have. They haven't spoiled the entire movie in the trailer. I hope they don't do that with any subsequent tra uh, trailers. I like to go in, you know, not you know, being able to guess the entire plot of the movie beat for beat because I've seen all the main events in the trailer. Uh, so Jumpster says, just the production value of it and the cast, I get they want to get the most popular actors and stuff, but I can't be doing with getting everyone from Marvel to come on every other film franchise. Who else is from Marvel? Paul Rudd. Batman. Paul Rudd, yeah, but who else? Just Paul Rudd. Interesting. See, I've always wanted Paul Rudd to be in a Ghostbusters a, a frequel. I've always thought he'd make a great Ghostbuster. I'm a big Paul Rudd fan. I'm just hoping that by the end of the film, uh, that he at least gets to put on a proton pack at some point. It kind of feels like he's going to be more the the go-to person for information. He, he almost feels like he's going to be the character, the teacher from Stranger Things, you know, who gives them sort of info. Um, you know, I don't know yet. Oh, <laughs> they're on a previous page. I missed out. Sorry, the missus is telling me off. Oh, I didn't see. So, I, I, yeah, I'm happy to see Paul Rudd in uh, in Ghostbusters. I just want him to actually, you know, bust some heads. <laughs> Rogue Runner's here. The runner they call Rogue. Uh, let's see. Seth Bland says it looked good. I think I just didn't think it was real because it seemed too good to be true. I get that, yeah. Oh, okay. He's referencing um so James was referencing when they had Chris Hemsworth in the remake. Yeah, that was that was terrible. <sighs> yeah, we don't talk of that movie here. I love how they the one thing that re I, so much about that film wound me up. Um, and I didn't just dismiss it straight away because it was all females. But one of the things that got me is how they were pushing, saying, like, oh, well, this one is because the first film was sexist. Uh, it was, was it? Like, I don't think it was, but okay. Well, oh, I haven't done those yet. Okay. <laughs> they were, um, so this one is going to be, you know, bringing it back for the girls. And then they cast Chris Hemsworth, who is an absolute idiot in the film, his character, I mean. And he gets literally hired just because the girls think he's hot, which he is. You know, as a heterosexual male, even I can acknowledge Chris Hemsworth is a hottie. Do you agree, Mrs. Craggle? Yes. Yeah, she agrees. <laughs> she likes Chris Hemsworth. <clears throat> but, like, you know, how can you say, then, it's not sexist <laughs> if it has, the, like, the one, most prominent male character in the film is an idiot who is only hired for his looks. It's just a, a stupid double standard. But... The cardinal sin of that film was that it wasn't even funny. It wasn't even good. It, you know, forget. You know, they could have cast chimpanzees in the main part. As long as it was a good film, it wouldn't matter. But no, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible movie. And we don't speak of it, even though I just did for like the last five minutes. <laughs> okay, we're putting down some plates. There we go. Uh, let's see. Checking on the chat. I feel blessed that I've only seen two episodes of Stranger Things, so I can't complain about similarities in Afterlife. 
Mm, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to complain about that, saying that, oh, it's too similar to Stranger Things. The thing is, though, if you're doing something that is so rooted in the 80s, because Ghostbusters obviously was 84 and 89, it's, you know, very much an 80s cultural phenomenon, you're going to get accusations or similarities to Stranger Things, because Stranger Things arguably made the 80s popular again. I mean, I was talking about this with one of my buddies a while back, and we both said, you know, we always loved 80s stuff. It never fell out of fashion with us. We used to love 80s movies, 80s music, 80s video games. And now it's kind of like it's trending with this, like, nostalgia that has, like, arisen. And I think, yeah, a, lo a large part of that is down to Stranger Things. So when you do anything that's in that decade or associated with that decade, people are going to be reminded of Stranger Things because it's what's most prominent in their in their in their heads at the moment. It does obviously help when you have one of the cast from Stranger Things in the film. And this happened with the remake of it as well. A lot of people said it was really good, but it was like heavily influenced by Stranger Things. I I can see that, but then Stranger Things itself was influenced by the works of Stephen King. So you know <laughs> what can you do? I mean I read an interview before, and uh, Finn Wolfhard said that he thought that he wouldn't get the part in Ghostbusters Afterlife because he had been in Stranger Things. And he was like, well, that's going to go against me, especially because, you know, the character dressed up as a Ghostbuster in Stranger Things. And um, basically, Jason Reitman said, no, we cast the best actor for the role. And it just happened to be Finn Wolfhard. So, you know, if anything, it's like he's been preparing for the role for the last... 10 years or something. Uh, Joshua Sylvester says, I loved Hinside Round the World. Oh, thank you. Also noticed that the one of the castle was your sick pig. Sick pig? <laughs> sick pig. Um, maybe. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny reports that the new character known as Pitt is based on yours truly. My lawyers advised me to say nothing. Uh, let's see. Joshua also says, I'm only 13, but my dad and me watch Stranger Things and Ghostbusters all the time. I love the 80s. You have good taste. I like you. Uh, so Chipsa says, The thing is, Stranger Things is a complete homage to the 80s movies, including Ghostbusters, so it's hard for Afterlife not to feel like Stranger Things, but it's just a recent 80s theme flick. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how I feel. You know, it's it's impossible for it not to have elements of it you know it's just one of those things and, and the thing is a lot of people nowadays there's almost a little bit of backlash on stranger things saying that all it has going for it is nostalgia and i don't think that's true i mean yes it definitely wears its influences on its sleeve you know it wears its heart on its sleeve and you know it's it's i think it's proud of its, of its you know its influences and what it plays homage to but it's one of those things where I think it's become more than the sum of its parts. Yes, it's part Goonies, part Indiana Jones, part Ghostbusters, part Stephen King. Um, God, what else? So many different things in there. Back to the Future even a little bit. Um, but it, it, it never feels to me, at least, derivative of any of that stuff. You know, it feels like they've taken all this stuff that they were inspired by, and I can imagine them enjoying the creators of Duffer Brothers, the same sort of stuff that I grew up enjoying, and they've made their own thing. And you can see elements from here and from that. But I don't think that's that's bad. I don't think that's any different than if you take Star Wars, for example, where he took influence from, you know, mythology, Wizard of Oz, um, you know, even Lord of the Rings to extent, you know, the Hero of a Thousand Faces. There's, there's references in there, Japanese movies, you know, westerns. But he made something completely new. And I think that, that is when you get something really special, it's when it makes you feel the same feeling as something else, but making it new. That was not a very elegant sentence, but I'm struggling right now to get some technic pins. So you'll have to forgive me. Uh, Roguerner says, so how, Crackle, did you manage to get this on day one release? I went to the Lego store. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're not in lockdown now in Wales anymore. FLX says, you got the set early, you damn Welsh man. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> not early. I got it on day one. Uh, Gaz Graphcom, Graph, yeah, Graphcom. I think that's right. Oh. Sorry. Uh, will we get a get in the the Ecto vid craggle? Um, it's gonna be in the next monthly vlog. So yeah, I did film some of it. I was a bit limited in some places because people were being people. <laughs> but yeah, have I done this wrong? I feel like no, I have not put it the right way. <laughs> But it's okay because you've got to do a mirror anyway. So I can just do this and it's okay, I think. <laughs> I, I can't build and do a live stream. We've established this. I don't know why I try because you bullied me. That's why. Okay. You did. You were like, you've got to build a lane on live stream. And I was like, can I not just build it, relax, and just like, you know, watch Ghostbusters? And you were like, no. You can yourself... never actually do the bat wing. With the bat wing? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I still haven't built my bat wing. How disgraceful is that? That is just insane. Like, I've had the bat wing for three weeks now. Yeah. I haven't built it yet. I've just been so busy. But Ghostbusters, the Ecto One was not waiting that long. Hey, is that the real Corey? I don't know. I haven't modded Corey yet. If it's the real Corey, um, drop me a message on Instagram and I'll, and I'll mod you. <laughs> and then, yeah, would that work? Yeah. Well, I guess I think like eight fake Corey accounts now <laughs> send me a message on Instagram. I'll make sure that's right. Uh, so Chepster says the similarities might actually help it. Could bring over quite a big fan base from the younger viewers, whereas the use of Ghostbusters brand will bring back the older fans. It's a good point, definitely. The only thing I hope... I hope people don't get put off if they only know the 2016 version. Now, that sounds like who in their right mind would only know that version. It's like knowing the um, the Stain Alive sequel, but not the original Sunlight Night Fever movie. You know, it, it's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I actually met someone at a comic Was it a comic con? It was some sort of event we went to end of last year. I think it was London MCM Comic Con. Yeah. And they honestly had never seen the original Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters 2. And they had they had seen the 2016 movie and were like, oh, yeah, it was terrible. So I don't want to watch any more Ghostbuster movies. <laughs> yeah. What 2016 version, Craggle? There is no such thing. Exactly. There is no such thing. It's so, so bad. Oh man, has anyone seen that? Um, I don't know if anyone here is into Transformers any t uh, um, by any chance, but I'm calling it a re-release because that's what it is. They're saying it's a new model, but it's not really. Hasbro are re-releasing the is it Ectotron? I think he's called the basically the Ecto One that is a Transformer. So they're re-releasing it with a little bit of rust on the front. And it's got a new head sculpt. And the other thing they've done is they've switched the ladder to the other side like it is in the new movie. But other than that, it is literally the exact same car, like the same model. The only new mold is the the head, which the painting on there looks significantly better. But I'm not sure if I like the new mold. I kind of wish they had that paint job on the old mold. And... What's really bad is because they've moved the ladder over to the other side, the window panel where the ladder was has like this random hole in it. It just looks so odd. But at the same time, I missed out on the uh, the first one, and it goes for ridiculous money online. So I am a little bit tempted to pick up the new one it also comes with a new ghost so it's got the slimer little ghost that the original one came and it's got the what well, they call the muncher which is the ghost we saw in the trailer that they're chasing down the street with uh, phoebe in the gunner seat and it has like four arms a lot of people thought that was slimer when they first saw the, the trailer but it was like it has four arms and it's blue <laughs> so it's not slimer 
So, yeah, I'm tempted to get that. Oh, Corey says it doesn't have Insta. Oh, okay, no worries, Corey. Um, I don't know. Get get Ryan to message me if it's the real you. Uh, Joshua Silverster says, my phone ringtone is the original Ghostbusters theme. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. My one at the moment, no one that rings me. I don't like phone calls. It's like, just text me or send me a message or something, you know? Um, my ringtone, I think, is it still Lego Dimensions theme? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Lego Dimensions theme. You know, the one where you're in, like, the hub on, uh, is it, yeah, Vortec. I haven't played that game in ages. I miss Lego Dimensions. And then, like, my message tone is the, uh, the noise from Sonic the Hedgehog when you collect a ring. I think I've done this wrong. No, I haven't. That's goes Okay. I don't even, that's quite cool. I don't even remember seeing this kind of uh, piece before. I'm guessing it's Technic. I don't really build Technic. The only Technic I do put together is the stuff that's normally the core of a, uh, a normal Lego system set. Uh, dude says, I hope there's enough new in Afterlife without everything just being a rehash of what we've seen before. I also hope that Dan, Ernie, and Bill aren't just in a two-minute cameo at the end. Yeah, I, I I hope that. Like, I feel like this is going to be a love letter to the originals. I mean, it's it's made by Jason Reitman, who is the son of the originals director, Ivan Reitman. He's actually in Ghostbusters 2. He's the one, the kid that tells uh, Ray that, that his dad says they're full of crap, which was always a joke because dad, his dad is the director. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that he grew up on the sets of the first two movies so he kind of sees himself as the original Ghostbusters fan like you know even though I don't think it was ever meant to be a proper a kids film you know Ghostbusters originally was just meant to be a, a film like a family film I guess it struck a chord with children and that's why they made the cartoon series and I think you know kids loved it some people say that's why they toned down the second one, although there's a lot in the second one which actually goes against the idea of it being toned down. <clears throat> but why is that not working? I put that in wrong. Ah, okay, it goes this way. He grew up on the set of the, uh, the first two movies, and he said that he always saw himself as the, the very first Ghostbusters fan. And I feel like he also mentioned that he spent a lot of time hanging out with um, Hal Ramis's daughter. I've forgotten her name now. Violet. Violet. I think she was a little bit younger than him. Um, but they kind of grew up together. They were both on the sets together. And they had like a brother-sister relationship. And I feel like that's going to feed into the story of this one with Phoebe and her brother. I feel like he's going to draw on that for the story. You know, like the sort of relationship to the two characters is going to be similar to the relationship that him and and Violet had. A lot of people were kicking off straight away. They were like, oh, you know, first do it with all women, now you're doing it with all kids. But I think it's going to be good. I'm hopeful. I think it's in safe hands. There was the whole thing in Los Angeles last year, I think it was, where they did like a Ghostbusters convention. And Ivan Reitman to me was saying all the right stuff. And I've just done something wrong. <laughs> I told you I can't build on live streams. He said that you know he made this film for the fans, for himself, and also for his father. So, and he's got he seems to have a great relationship with his father. So, I feel like you know he wants to honor that legacy, and I feel this is going to be a massive tribute to Harold Ramis as well. Like it's it's all but been confirmed in the last trailer that these are going to be the Spenglers. They're going to be Egon's grandkids. So I'm hoping there's going to be a fitting tribute, unlike the movie we don't speak of, which did a horrible abomination of a tribute by making him a ghost. That's like in one freaking scene. The CG. That, that also annoyed me. <laughs> Do re Egon. Yeah, I got the reference. They hate this. 
Is anyone else, anyone nervous about the film? Do you feel like it's going to sully the legacy of the original Ghostbusters movie? Let's face it, it can't be any worse than what the last one did. I'm hopeful. I mean, ideally, I would have loved to have seen... It's too late now, really. Too much time has passed. But I would have loved to have seen an adaptation of Extreme Ghostbusters. And if you ever watched that, that was a, it was a follow-up cartoon series. It was a sequel to the real Ghostbusters show uh, in the mid to late 90s, I want to see. Tara Strong was actually one of the voices of the characters before she got married. So she has a different surname. I can't remember what her surname is. She paid Kylie. And that was done really well. It was a proper, like, passing up the torch thing. And basically, Egon's a lecturer at a university. And basically, more ghosts come out. And he sort of trains this new generation of Ghostbusters. And he's kind of like the Alfred, I guess. Um, or even, like, if you people watch, remember Kit? Like, the old man who was in the truck who used to, like, help Michael all the time. He's kind of like that. He's like, supplies them with technology and... He, you know, they'll say, like, we encountered this, and he'll go, okay, so this reminds me of this thing, you know? He was their mentor, their guide. But what was really good about it is that I feel like it was ahead of his time in terms of, in, what's the word? Inclusivity? Inclusivity? Is that the word? Inclu it, was, it was really inclusive. I think there's a word. I don't know. I can't think of it. Because it had... I had, obviously, I had a black Ghostbuster, which we had before. Um, I love Winston. I wish he had more to do in the films. The Carson series really did a good job of fleshing him out as a character, but I, I, I still to this day wish they had done more with Vinnie Hudson. Met him as well, and he's a lovely, lovely man. And um, they, so they had the black Ghostbuster. They had a female Ghostbuster. They had a, I think it was, was he Puerto Rican, Eduardo? I think he was Puerto Rican. And they also had a paraplegic, Garrett, who was in a wheelchair. And the thing was, it wasn't like they were ticking off some checklist of, like, we have to have someone from this demographic or this demographic. It was, like, inclusive without you ever realizing it because they were such well-rounded, well-written characters, and they were fantastically performed by these voice actors. And it was just so, so good. You know, rather than going, oh, this time we're making it all female because, you know, it's 2016 or whatever. This was a new generation of Ghostbusters that had a wider range of characters from different backgrounds coming together and working together and becoming friends. And it just works so, so well. Inclusivity, that's the one, yeah. I probably said that wrong as well. If you haven't seen Extreme Ghostbusters, I think it's on Amazon Prime, is it? It was on Amazon Prime. It's definitely worth checking out. It's, they only did one season, uh, sadly, because it didn't do particularly well. I think at that point, Ghostbusters hype had kind of died down. People were onto other stuff in the 90s. And, like, the toy range. The toy range was okay. They didn't do every character. They didn't They, they didn't get around to doing Garrett, which really annoyed me, because he was my favorite character. Um, but in terms of a show, I showed it to you last year for the first time, didn't I? Yeah, I showed it to Mrs. Crackle, because she had never seen it. She'd seen the original real Ghostbusters cartoon from the 80s. And uh, you loved it, didn't you? Yeah. And it feels like it, it feels like a proper continuation. There, there's a couple episodes that are direct sequels to the real Ghostbusters, but also the tone of the show is a little bit more mature, so it was almost like it grew up with the audience. So the ones who were younger kids in the 80s, early 90s, by the mid-90s, it was a little bit more mature, going almost into young adult territory. Really, really good show, but, you know, I would have loved to have seen a live-action adaptation of that, but I feel like enough time, too much time has passed now to do that, so I'm hoping Afterlife will be a good alternative or a fantastic alternative. Uh, topic hopping for a little bit. Uh, so Chepster says, anybody else feel like they should make a Lego Hinsight TV show? I just feel like it would go quite well alongside Ninjago. Well, they did the webisodes, didn't they? Um, which were quite cool. I enjoyed those. And they've recently done the Night at the Harbinger Halloween special. Which I'm probably going to do a review video on. Um, I did put a community post up. And I think the majority of people said, yeah, they like to see one. So I'm going to be working on that in the next couple of days. 
I've been trying to think about how to do it because I don't think it's actually readily available online at the moment. It was broadcast on CITV in the UK and Cartoon Network in the US, which is weird because the rest of the cartoon was online. So I don't know why they decided to do that on TV because if you didn't watch the web... I mean, you, you could watch Night of the Harbinger and not have seen any of the other webisodes, I think, but... It definitely would have made it better. I thought it was, you know, spoiler alert for my review video, I thought it was great. I would love to see more like that. I hope, you know, if Hinside does continue, that we get maybe a couple more, even if they're straight to DVD films like they do for DC. And heck, Scooby-Doo got two anime movies. It got one when the theme was out, and then another one came out, what, about two months after the theme retired? Because a lot of people thought, like, including myself, were like, are we getting new sets then? So, yeah. I love supernatural stuff, so <laughs> I'm game. I don't know. I'm looking for the one by three in black. Oh. That one. Yeah, I need two of them. Thank you all. Save hidden side. Yeah. I really like the theme. I know a lot of people don't. I feel like it was it was an underdog from when it first started. And I do feel like Part of it that let the theme down was the fact they put so much emphasis on the app and the box art doesn't even show you the actual sets. But, you know, I don't even use the app. The missus has tried playing the app a couple of times, haven't you? You yeah. did it once when you played as a ghost and yes. you did one of the sets. Yeah, they got installed. But honestly, just as a theme, I think it's really good. It has some fantastic builds. It has some great looking minifigures. I like the lawn. I like the characters to it. I mean... You've probably guessed I love Inside. I've done like a whole series of my own ideas of what they could do for you know a world tour theme. There is a another episode coming that I'm working on. Originally, I was going to release them one day after the other, but I uh, I got a bit carried away with the first one and put a lot more into that because I realised the storyline would probably end up being like across four episodes. So instead, I've tried to make two longer episodes. So if you haven't already seen. The uh, the Wales edition of Hinside World Tour with the uh, the Green Lady in Caffili Castle. Be sure to check that out because there's going to be a follow up coming in the near future. Uh, Cinematic Art eighty eight says probably already been asked this, but why didn't you wait until next week to buy the set? As with all the promos and VIP points, um, I did mention at the start of the uh, the stream. You might not have been here. But I was actually going to do that, even though it was killing me inside because I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan and I I want to have this set as soon as possible. I was planning on doing that. And then I found out they were doing a Ghostbusters Afterlife exclusive Lego print or poster. And the thing is, the Stranger Things one never got put on the website. It's one of the things you can buy with VIP uh, points. That notebook thing did, but not the actual poster. And it goes for silly money on, on eBay now. So I decided that was enough of a push to make me go and get it on day one. So, yeah. I am still going to be purchasing stuff for Christmas and also a few other sets that I want to get next week. So I will still be taking advantage of Double VIP and hopefully getting the... Oh, yeah, I will be getting. So how much money I'm going to spend. Yeah, I'll be getting the Charles Dickens promo as well. But I really wanted to get this set today. And they hooked me with that print. <laughs> Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Let me know in the comments or in the live chat, I should say, if you get that reference. Probably won't. <laughs> Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Uh, can you show the print? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I should be able to. Do you want to grab it? I might take some camera adjusting. Uh... We can get that for you. I have sent my best woman out to get it. I'm glad she's not here to hear me say that. She'd be like, best woman? You mean only woman? Dude says, Godfather free. You are correct, sir. What am I doing with this now? I feel like I've missed something on this. I have, that's why. I haven't done those bits. Oh, I've missed like an entire page. How have I done that? 
Okay. Um, right. If I, you hold it like that, I'm going to lift the camera up a second. It's going to get a bit shaky now, okay? Da da da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ghostbusters! How cool is that? It's basically the Ghostbusters Afterlife teaser poster, but with the actual Lego Ecto 1 in it. I think that's pretty cool. There we go. So, yeah, that, <laughs> that little thing was enough to get me uh, to buy it. Nice singing. <laughs> It was terrible singing, but I appreciate the compliment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Joshua Sylvester says, I wish I could get the Echo Echo one, but trying to get all the inside sets before they retire. Good job. Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've got all... No, tell a lie. I actually, I thought I had every single Lego Hinside set. And I do, except one poly bag. And I can't find it anywhere. It's in Ireland. Yeah, it's in Ireland. Sai's gone now. Should have like said Sai, oi, send that poly bag over here. <laughs> I got the, the Cannonball one, haven't I? It's the hot dog vendor po Hinside poly bag. That's the only thing I haven't got um, of the Lego Hinside sets. But I mentioned earlier, I, I've heard conflicting uh, stories about it either retiring or going on hiatus for a year to like eight months. So, sorry, just having a drink there. We'll, we'll see. I love him decide to come back, but I'm really, really, I'm more concerned if we're going to get some Ghostbusters sets next year to tie in. Some mini fig scale sets. That's what we need. We want more level Ghostbusters, and then we want to save him side. <laughs> oh, and we also want a UCS DeLorean. And a UCS kit. These are our demands. Yes. Good demands. You will submit to our demands, or we will kill the children. What children? I don't know. Don't mess with us. We mean business. I just dropped like four viewers then. I think the words kill the children just meant they just like automatically dropped off. Okay. Cabbage fat cabbage face Lego. Hello chat. Hello, cabbage face Lego. What happened? Cabbage face. Reminds me of those toys in the nineties. Remember those? Oh, cabbage cabbage patch, patch kids. Dolls. Dolls, dolls. I don't know. Oh, they were not kids. I no, thought they were cabbage patch kids. kids. Okay, cabbage patch dolls. I don't know. I remember the adverts for them. Back when they used to be able to advertise Jones toys on television. Are they banned that now, or is it just cereal they've banned advertising? It's Land of Sweet. Hello there. Uh, Cinematic Art 88 says, The Hinside poly bag you need was at my local Smiths for free with a Lego purchase. It wasn't promoted. I was just offered it at the till. <laughs> was I right? About the Cabbage Patch Kids? Yeah, it's kids and... Aha! I was right, I was right, I was right. You were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong. Don't poke me. You see, because you're not on camera, you get away with murder. That's abuse. <laughs> oh, why do I put up with you? Because I love you. And she's got big boobs. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. It was it was the voice of a ghost. It was Slimer. Uh, Josh Whistler says, do you have a peel box? No, I've been thinking about getting one. Um, they're just really expensive in the UK. They seem to be way more expensive than they are in the US. It might be something I look to do in the future, um, but I don't think there's that many people eager to send me stuff anyway at the moment. So, Okay, i got to attach these now. I hate when you got to attach long things. you got to try and get all the studs lined up. Wait, how is... Okay. This, this is going to be easier than I thought, actually. Famous last words. Yeah. Okay, there we go. What? The European P.O. Box prices in the UK? It's because it's done through Royal Mail. Yeah. Royal Mail are, are 
bloody thieves on the quiet. Yeah, deliver it to the home address. It's £36 a month. I don't know if you saw, I recently had a parcel from my friend Greg, aka Brick Attacked. And because he marked it as a gift, but because it was he put the true cost of what was in there and it was over a certain threshold, they charged me customs on it. But the customs weren't even that much. The actual big thing was eight pounds of it, well, which was like eleven, twelve dollars in the US. But yeah, eight pounds of it was Royal Mail's handling charge. It's like you had your handling charge. That's the cost of postage. It's freaking ridiculous. I don't know. How is that going to work? That can't be right. Did you do it wrong? I don't know. Yeah, I've done it wrong. There you go. I was trying to put it in the wrong place. <laughs> Joshua Silvester says, does she look as good as Parker? By the way, I would send you the poly back. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, she looks better than Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your good books now. Yes. Okay. I got so much crap for saying the park. It was cute. It was ridiculous. People can't do this. I know. It's just a joke, but there you go. They haven't explained in canon, though, if she's learned how to swim, though. Because when I designed my um, Hinside Will Tell Loch Ness one, I put her in a wetsuit. Because I don't know why. I just thought with the characters, she's more likely to be the one that's willing to get in the water with Nessie than, than Jack. And then the episode came out where they reveal she can't swim. But then, come way free, she's in the submarine wearing a wetsuit. So, I guess she learned to swim. <laughs> that's, that's in my head canon. One thing I thought was really cool, though, I don't know. Mild spoiler for Night of the Harbinger, they actually name-dropped the Loch Ness Monster. So, I'm taking that, that the Hinside World Tour now is part of the official LEGO canon because I had them encounter the Loch Ness Monster and a Loch Ness Monster gets name dropped in the Halloween special. So <laughs> it totally isn't canon, but I'm, I was like, yep, I've been acknowledged. <laughs> I can pretend. Uh, the Benny Zone says, hey, what's up, man? Mine should be here in a few days. Super excited. Yeah, I. I it, this is... A gorgeous looking set and i'm having fun building it so far so i hope that you really enjoy it when you get it um let's see so chepster says they banned the toys and cereals because kids choked but didn't ban kinder eggs oh my word really <laughs> i remember when you used to get free toys and cereal boxes do you remember that i remember in the 90s there was one it was in sugar puffs they can't even call them sugar puffs now because the name sugar <laughs> puffs just sounds like childhood obesity <laughs> But they used to have these trading cards um, of Batman of all different, like, there was like a pirate Batman or pirate Joker. There was like a, a cyborg Batman and stuff like that. And if you got these uh, trading cards, you had you had one that, that was like a chase of the Joker. And on the Joker one, it would have a circle with another trading card in there. So if you got the Joker and you got the, tra the trading card that ha was in the picture, you could send them off to Sugar Puffs and they would send you one of the action figures. And lots of people would get the Joker card and then for ages couldn't find the right drink card to match it. And I got them both in the same box of cereal, <laughs> the first box of cereal that I bought. So, so lucky. Uh, Seth Bland said, you still attach. I heard I don't like the touch long things. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'll have a little bit of a snack. Uh... So Chepster says, to be honest, the reason I love Hinside is because I share the same name as the protagonist. What, Jack or Parker? Or are you actually Sir El Fuego, Chepster? Sorry, I'm munching now. <laughs> uh, Joshua Silverster says, I enjoy doing stop frame with my Lego Hinside. That's cool. Have I done this wrong again? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've done it wrong again. Oh, man. There you go. There you go, Jack. Jack. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. I'm joking. This is a song. <laughs> I haven't heard that song in ages. I used to like that song. This is a bit weird. That's kind of hanging off the edge. You're going to have to bust me out there, surely. 
Hmm. Unless I've done this wrong again. No, that's right. Yeah. It's pretty colourful on the inside, isn't it? Mind you, the um, Steamboat Willie was like one of the most colourful sets I've ever built until you get to the outside. Even though the set is like black and white, it's so colourful on the inside. And I have definitely done something wrong. Look, there's like a whole strip here. This is all down to one and two for many, isn't it? Yeah. But then that makes no sense, though, because... That's in mine. Yeah. That's in line. How have I messed this up? <laughs> oh, man. It's not. Uh, no, it's like there's four studs here, grey, black. But then what do you attach that to? Because that goes on there. And there's no blue strip here. Ah, uh, he, the blue strip's too far up. Oh, okay. So wait, that whole thing here should be one down? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is going to be painful. Oh, it's going to be very <laughs> Oh, dear. I can fix it. <laughs> it wouldn't be a, a Cut the Craggle live stream without something going wrong, would it? <laughs> Pricked a lot. <laughs> Pricked a lot. <laughs> Yo! Oh, you pretty lot. I have to apologize. After making you wait so long for me to do a video on the parcel you sent, the missus got really frustrated and just opened it. So I didn't get a chance to film it. I apologize. Well, I did. I had plenty of chances. I just didn't get around <laughs> to it. Okay. <laughs> we, can, we can salvage this. It's not the end yet. Um, where were I? <laughs> uh, oh, dear. <coughs> Why Why does it always mess up on camera? I'm normally quite a good builder. I don't normally mess up that much. Part the, your life screen. Yeah, the main mess up I did was the one on the temple of... Um, <coughs> was it? Uh, Air Jitsu. Yeah, because I did the two base panels. There was one that was uh, tan and one that was light tan. And in the manual, they looked like they were the wrong way around. That manual was insane. Yeah, it wasn't fun, was it? So we had to take the whole building that made... Off the um, off the base plate, put it on the other one, <laughs> put it on that one, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We actually managed it. You know, there was a few bits come apart, but it was we didn't have to build the whole thing again, did we? So, Ooh, thank you. All. You're welcome. Oh dear, <clears throat> what's the biggest mistake that you've made in a while well, building a Lego set? Uh, let's see. So Chepster says, actually, you got me. It's all free. My name is Jack Elfuego Parker. <laughs> uh, Giraffe Named Drulud, I hope I said that right, says, Oma MG, I wish I could get this, but I can't. Does not matter since I can't get, I can watch. Man, this is exciting. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Uh, Joshua Silverster says, I was missing a piece from my Hinside High School, so went through and broke all of my non-Lego Hinside sets and found nothing. Uh, so I had to take two pieces to replace one. Oh, no. Uh, so Chepster says, Crago, you are so lucky. The only time my girlfriend gets involved in my Lego is if I can get an architecture set. <laughs> oh, and Britlock says, no big deal, guy. It's all good. There you go. Thank you again, Britlock. She says, thank you again. I don't know if the mic picked that up because she talks like minus 17 decibels. <laughs> you have to have super hearing to hear her. But, you know, some people would say it's a plus. Big boobs and can't speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm ducking down right now so I don't get hit in the face. Uh, Seth Bland says, I ended up with a leftover sticker on the 89 Batmobile. I can't be bothered looking. Wow, where would you lose that? Um, Is it on one of the sides? Just there's any in the cockpit. There is. There's a bunch there's, of stickers in the cockpit, yeah. Maybe it's one of those then. Mm. What is the sticker? Because it's, it's like a bat symbol. There's bat symbols on the there's hubcaps. The fuel bit. There's the fuel caps. They were pain to put on because you've got to get them level on either side of the build. Mm. A lot of people I know just left them off. I was tempted to, but I put them on because OCD. I wanted it to be accurate, you know? Mm. There's not many on the bat wing. Yeah, there's a lot on this. 
I know. And they're all a trans one. Why did they not print the Ecto one plate? Why they did last they gonna, time. They print the Cadillac. The I what? Like what did you call it? <laughs> did you hear what she just called a Cadillac? Oh, I see. She called Cadillac. Why didn't they print that? That'd be quite cool. Because of the Lego. That one. You like the Tormentors. Oh, yeah. Oh, Look at that, folks. It's like a little Stay Puffed. Stay Puffed Marshmallows. It was only when I got the DVD copy of this, which, in all fairness, is quite a while back now anyway, but I got the DVD version of Ghostbusters that I realised how many Stay Puffed references are throughout the film before like, he even turns up. Like, um, when you got like one of the the wide shots of the firehouse, the building across the row has like a big billboard for Stay Puft Marshmallows. When Dana puts her shopping on the counter and takes her shopping out, she has a packet of Stay Puft mm -hmm. Marshmallows. I when we gave them to that um, guy in New York. Oh, yeah. We, from, my, from one of my birthdays, we went to New York and uh, we visited all like the locations they filmed Ghostbusters in Manhattan. And we went to the apartment building, Dana's apartment building. And um, there was a doorman there, <laughs> and we were dressed in Ghostbuster flight suits, and we were having photographs, and he was so nice. And we had a packet of Stay Puff marshmallows, <laughs> and we gave him some, and he was like, these are so good. <laughs> and one of the rest of us came out and saw us in our Ghostbuster flight suits, eating Stay Puff marshmallows with the doorman, and was like, what the hell? <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> she was just so bewildered, wasn't she? Yeah, but I don't put that on now. I'm going to put it on now. I was having a snack, that's all. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. That's the last piece of hamper on. There's like some yellow bits. Yeah, on that Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, apparently it's some computer thingy. Yeah, that's going to be in the cockpit then. Uh... That's going to be a nightmare to take out though. Yeah. It's... <sighs> it's all built around it. I think, yeah, I think you put the stickers on and then you build the rest of it around it, yeah. around the mm -hmm. dash. So, yeah, that would be a pain. But <clears> you know what? It would bug me. Oh, I just put that in the wrong place again. <laughs> it would it would bug me <clears> not <throat> having it and having a sticker on. That's not a great set, though. I love the 89 Batmobile. One of my, it's, at the moment, it's my second favorite set. My first favorite being the, uh, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. And yeah, I'm aware that I'm a little bit biased because I'm such a Ghostbusters nerd. Um, but yeah, I love the Ghostbusters Firehouse. I had so much fun building it. It's the only set at the moment that I've got any lights installed. I want to get lights in my um, Disney Castle set. I don't know if Rogue's still about, but he'll be pleased with it to hear that. But I'm trying to find a decent one. I kind of want to get one that has the fiber optics behind it. So like when you turn the lights off and you have it, it looks like fireworks going off behind the castle. I've got a spare one of those. Oh, there you go. It's okay. We fixed it. I'm still missing some yellow bits here. What yellow bits? Oh, those ones. Yeah. I didn't give them. <laughs> See, so you're sabotaging the build now because you're not giving me the right pieces. Unbelievable. <laughs> and what do they say in The Princess Bride? Inconceivable. Inconceivable. Uh, let's see. Seth Bland, I love it, but did not enjoy the build. I am so sorry, Mr. Firehouse. Oh, so you didn't enjoy the uh, the Batmobile build? Oh, that's surprising. I, I really enjoyed the build for that one. I didn't think I was gonna. I honestly was like, I'm really not gonna enjoy this type of build, but I know it's gonna look good in the end, so I'm just gonna plow through it. And I actually had a blast. I was enthralled with all the different building techniques, and even though you kind of are making two of most stuff because it's a symmetrical, you know, it's a car. I never felt like I was repeating myself. I really did enjoy that, that build. But I have heard um, the same guy who told me that this was one of the best things, if not the best thing he built, that the, the Batwing isn't a particularly fun build. He said, it looks great. It looks fantastic alongside the Batmobile. He enjoyed the Batmobile like me and was surprised how much he enjoyed it. But said the Batwing... Apparently, isn't that great to build? And I was like, no, don't tell me that. I think I pushed that in too far. Don't say that's what she said. <laughs> You're as bad as me. There you go. I think that's okay. I don't know how that's going to attach to anything now. 
Well, we'll see. It'll be all right. We'll figure it out. So what sets have you guys built that you enjoyed the finished model but didn't necessarily enjoy the actual building of the set? Because to me, I really like a set that you enjoy the build as well. It's all very well having a great final model. But to me, part of the experience of LEGO is a building toy, is to actually enjoy the putting together of the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Joshua Hilner, have you betrayed LEGO and got any of the Playmobil things? I don't know what you're talking about. Playmobil? What, what's Playmobil? <laughs> Do you know what they're talking about? Mm. No, I haven't got a clue. No, no idea. Uh, Joshua Sylvester, how cool would a Lego Back to the Future set be? Yeah, I mean, we've got we got one Lego Back to the Future set already. Um, technically, I guess, if you count Lego Dimensions, we got a couple others. Oh, we got the Brickheads. Um, we did get a Back to the Future Brickhead, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Marty and Doc. Yeah, I was starting to doubt myself then. Um... Well, actually, that is going to go in all the way. Okay. That's what she said. But I would love to get a UCS style DeLorean. It would have to be customizable, like the Ideas one was, so that you could make it like the configuration. You could have it as the DeLorean, how it is in Back to the Future Part 1, or have it how it is in Back to the Future Part 2 or Part 3. Do, 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 do. Okay. Right, uh, I think we're going places. We're making some kind of mechanism here now. I think that's going to be the gunner seat. I don't know, maybe. What are you laughing at now? Someone says, I heard that, Mrs. Craggle. Why, what did you say? I missed what? <laughs> that's what she said. You said it? <laughs> oh, did I miss that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, dear me. Uh, Joshua Hilner, Ghostbusters playing with your sets. I don't I know, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, we have a donation. Let's have a look. It is from Space Time Brick Studio. I recognize that guy. He's got one of the most awesome profile pics ever. I think he donated on um on Greg's stream, didn't he? He says, what do you think of a Ghostbusters and Hinsai crossover? I really enjoyed your Hinsai content. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for the, the, the donation. I can't speak. Thank you so much for the donation. Um, yeah, I think it'd be quite cool. It would, it would obviously be like Lego Ghostbusters crossed over with Lego Hinside. It wouldn't be like canon, I don't think, to, to Ghostbusters, but I could totally see it working. Hmm, that's got me a lot of ideas now. <laughs> Do you know, a long, long time ago, I remember online reading a fan fiction of Stargate, Stargate SG-1 and Ghostbusters. And it, it was so good. Basically, there was alien ghosts came through the, the Stargate and there was alien ghosts on this world. So they had to hire the Ghostbusters, get them to sign like the official Secrets Act um, and have them go over there and ha help Jack O'Neill and Daniel Jackson bust these alien ghosts and everything and get to the bottom of it, basically. it was I can't remember all the plot, but I remember it was just so well written. It was really good. But yeah, I don't know. A, a Ghostbusters Hidden Side crossover could be quite fun. I am thinking that you know the next episode of the Hidden Side World Tour will be the last. That was my plan. But I say last. I'm not ruling out doing another one in the future, but I think it'll be the last one for a while. Um, originally, I was doing a monthly, but that was kind of... It was kind of burning me out a little bit because it took so much work to, to put them together that I went two monthly. And then this year, with everything that's gone on, there was a bit of a gap between the latest one and the previous. So, um, yeah, there's going to be another one. I'm hoping to get it done by the end of this month. It might sort of um, slip into the start of December, but that might be the last one for a while. But that's not to say we can't do some more stuff. And definitely a Ghostbusters Hinside crossover has got me thinking of ideas now already. <laughs> and thank you once again for the, the donation. Donation! Uh, what else is in the chat? We've also got... Kenna kind of already did that with the haunted humans. I don't know what that means. I'm confused. I miss something. Miss the haunted humans toy line. Mm. I'm confused. I don't know. I miss something. Seth Bland. Oh, man, I love Stargate SG-1. Yeah, I did. 
I love Stargate SG One back in the day, and uh, the, the the fanfic was this. It was just so. It sounds so implausible, but it was just so well done. I remember reading it, going, "This could be like an actual book." Um, oh yeah. I get what he means. Yeah. So he means like the Hinsai crossover. You know, with with Hinsai has like the gloom. Um, you know, with the ghosts becoming infected, uh, infected is like the haunted humans they did back in the eighties with the uh, the Kenner Ghostbuster toys. That is very true. In fact, I think on a couple of my reviews of the Hinside sets, I've said how this or that reminds me of the old Ghostbuster toys, the um, the fearsome flush two point in the uh, <laughs> what was it? The what was that one in? It was the bus. Yeah, it was the bus, wasn't it? The uh, in the bus set, had this toy that basically was like a haunted portaloo, a haunted toilet, and it reminded me of the, the the haunted toilet toy they did for Ghostbusters in the eighties, the fearsome flush. We dubbed it the fearsome flush two point oh. Uh, let's see, they were really rad Ghostbusters toys. Yeah, I remember them. They were really cool. Ah, my hands here. I have arrived very late. <laughs> Yeah, where have you been? Uh, let's see. D -d 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 this goes here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to make sure I don't make any more mess ups. But I promise you, I'm not ignoring you. Joshua Silvester says, uh, "Can't uh, can I say it's not very well known? But there was a place in England called Crom Court, and lots of people have died there. So just an idea for inside across the world. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a bit dark, but yeah." Um, I think uh, I think I'm pretty much done though with Inside World. So the next one is going to be like the last installment. I might do some more Inside stuff in the future. I don't know if it'd be World Tour, if it'd be something else, maybe. Um, but the next part, I already have planned out what's going to happen, and it should be fun. As <laughs> <laughs> to say, it is going to be a continuation of kind of the plot threads that were left dangling in the. Uh, in the last episode. So if you've watched the last episode, you'll know that not everything was completely resolved. So that was on purpose. That wasn't me just giving up. Wait, how does that work? It's the white's in line with the black. Oh, he's not put the black one down yet. There you go, that's why. Perhaps we'll put the piece the right way around. I totally just didn't do that on camera, did I? <laughs> There's dust in here already. I freaking hate dust. God, you haven't even finished building the set yet, and dust has landed on it. How dare they? Vast and Narada. Uh, hey, Lego Panda Guy. Hey, Alexander Bond. Mohan says, oh, so why Crackle came into the Hinside world, and why Parker fell in love with him? I don't know what he's on about, do you? No. Crackle in the Hinside world? Parker fell in love how with him? Is, how many got those? Is it two? The great ones. Uh, two. Yeah, I have. I have no idea. No. 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 You. You know what he's about. No. No, no idea. No, me neither. Mystery. How about a Ghostbusters hinside set that is similar to Highway Hunter from the real Ghostbusters? It would be an Ecto one that turns into a monster. That could be cool. Do you remember they did a, um, a Ghostbusters toy that was a Volkswagen Beetle that turned into a Prey Mantis? <laughs> it was so, so cool. Uh, they also had like, a, a Ghostbusters Road Sweeper. Playmobil have done a bunch of real Ghostbuster sets, and they're kind of cool, but they don't remind me of, apart from the Ghostbusters being in the coloured flight suits from the cartoon series, the actual ghosts in there don't remind me of anything from the show or the old toy line. I guess maybe they couldn't, you know, recreate stuff that was done by Kenner because of copyright, but I thought they might have done something based on the show. Oh no! Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, brother from another brick is here. What a do, baby boo! How's it going, Mr. B Fabulous? Uh, Alexander Bond, you are one of my favourite Lego reviewers. Oh, thank you. And Mahan says, oh, sorry, his name wasn't Craggle. No, oh, okay. Do you mean Pitt? 
Yeah, any um, any likeness to persons real or fictitious are uh, purely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say? Okay, good. <clears throat> Just hitting Bonquisha again. Now, is Bonquisha, is that like a metaphor for something? <laughs> I hope so. When are we going to get the next part of that, by the way? I want to know what happens. I want I, I want to know. I want to have Bonquisha rise from the dead like a phoenix. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh... Lego Panda Guy, Crago, do you like The Mandalorian? If if I do, have, oh, if, if you do, have you watched episode three? Yes. Yes, I do watch The Mandalorian. Yes, I have watched episode three, and I thought it was awesome. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. No spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, it's only been out since Friday. Yeah, it's a bit early for spoilers. I'd, yeah, no spoilers, please, for The Mandalorian. Um, I've seen it, but I'm guessing some people probably haven't yet. Like my sister. Your sister hasn't watched Mandalorian yet. Oh. Has she watched season one yet? Yeah. Huh. She was supposed to watch it yesterday. She forgot. I know someone from uh, from Germany <laughs> has only just started watching uh, Mandalorian season one. Apparently, it's only just come out over there. I don't know if that's what? true or not. I was like, you serious? And then he just didn't answer me. We, we got it in March. <laughs> in March. Yeah. We got it after America, so I'm quite glad that we're getting season two at the same time, because I thought it was a bit of a mick take that they made us wait. I mean... I may or may or not have watched it by other means. <laughs> so I didn't get... Because the thing is, it... Baby Yo, Draw the Child was such a meme by the time it came out in the UK that it was like, how could you watch that and not have, you know, have stuff of it spoiled for you already, you know? I've done that wrong. That one's in the wrong place. Is it all piece of the page? Uh, two one by fours in black, please. Well, you can give me one. Here you go. Go on, Dory. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Hilner says, I actually have the full wave of the reproductions of the real Ghostbusters toy line, including the boys, Stay Puffed, and Slimer. I also have an incomplete OG kind of firehouse and an OG trap. Yeah, I used to have every single um, Ghostbusters kind of toy, I think. I think the only one I was missing, I was missing the Ecto 1A because they left it to my uncle to get for me and he got me the Ecto 1 again. And I think there was one. I don't think I got the Lewis Tully mini, uh, Lewis Tully action figure that they did later on, um, but I had pretty much all the others. Sadly, I lost them all in a house fire. So yeah, I do still have um, an original Kenner Proton Pack and Ghost Trap. Not the ones I had when I was a kid, but a few years after the house fire, I did a fancy dress cost. Went to, I went to a fancy dress party and I bought one off eBay because they were quite cheap at the time um, to wear. <laughs> Completely forgetting that they were sized for a child. So there was me as an adult with <laughs> this child's proton pack on my back. <laughs> it looks very silly. I think I've seen the photo one. Apparently, Brother from Another Brick says, Baby Yoda is super sexy. I hope he means cute rather than, than sexy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> Brother from Nubrick says, embarrassing, Craggle. Yeah, because you've never embarrassed yourself on a live stream before, have you, Mr. B. Fabulous? Uh, so Chepster says, Luke Skywalker turns out to be related to Leia. Yeah. What? Spoilers. Oh, my God. You just ruined Star Wars for me. <gasps> oh, how can I ever continue watching it now? Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, Mahan says, wait, you know about Baby Yoda before Disney Plus came in the UK? Oh, it's not like everyone and their grandma can't knows about Baby Yoda before Disney Plus came in the UK. Exactly. It was just ridiculous. In my work, they were using Baby Yoda memes in some of the internal memos like before Disney Plus came over. So, yeah. I still need to watch the... Is it the gallery, the making of the Mandalorian? I still need to watch that. I've seen clips of, of it, but huh? I have to watch after season two. Oh, I think I should watch it on YouTube. I've got Disney Plus now. I can watch it on there. Um, apparently, it's really good. But I honestly, I, I don't. A few people said they weren't happy with the the season two opener. I thought it was superb. I loved the season two opener. Like the whole battle with the uh, 
the crate dragon was just I thought it was like something you would see in an action Hollywood film. The, the the scope of it and the the work on the CG it was just fantastic. I loved as well how like they did like the um, the vertigo or the jaws zoom in and pan out on um, what was the name Cobb Vanth? Yeah. When he saw the crate dragon and it went from being in like cinema scope with the black bars either side to like full screen and then at the end then it's the Mandalorian you know, uh, rolled off on the speeder bike. It went back then to having the black bars then come back in. I thought that was really well done. And I've done this wrong. No, you know. No, that should be the way around. Oh, that breaks. Okay. It's okay. I can fix it. <clears throat> uh, what? I don't even know what BFAB's on about. Who needs a baby Yoda when you have a baby Gandhi? And Mahan says, can we ban Sir Chepster for spoiling a 40-year-old movie? <laughs> I used to work in Primark, and they had Baby Yoda shirts before Disney Plus came to the UK. <laughs> yeah, I can believe that. It was daft. I get what they were trying to do. They didn't want people in the UK to sort of, like, um, you know, get Disney Plus, watch Mandalorian all in one go, and then, you know, cancel their subscription, but... It was so daft because all it did was make people watch it by other means. And the other thing was, like, they didn't bring Disney Plus over to, to Europe the same time as America because they said, oh, they didn't have the licensing for all of the content. Like, some of the like some of the content they put onto Disney Plus had like existing licenses with other streaming services um, that were due to run out. So that's what they waited for. That's all well and done. But then when Disney Plus UK came to the UK, it didn't have all the content the American one did anyway. So it was like, what was the point in waiting? It still doesn't have all the same content, you know? Oh, I see a sticker. That was really well. Oh, the rust stickers. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Do I leave the rust stickers off now? Or do I put them on and then like make a list of all the parts that have the stickers on and then... Because my idea is to have one set of the pieces with the rust on and one with them off so that I can change it depending on how I feel. Mm. But it's going to be afterlife anyway because it has the gunner seat and it has the ladder mm. on the other side and it has the road control. You don't want to put the rust sticker on, do you? No, because they're clear. I know, because they're clear. I hate clear stickers. <laughs> I hate stickers. Leave them off. We can always go back to the button pieces. <laughs> Okay, you're, the, you're, you're the boss. You're the boss, boss. The boss has spoken. We're leaving the stickers off, apparently. Also, Chester makes a good point. What? Leave the rust stickers for now, then put them on when Afterlife releases. Yeah, could do. <laughs> Josh Leona says, put them on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kind of want to have like one set of pieces with them on and one with them off, just so I can have the option. I guess kind of like the uh, the treehouse where you can change the leaves in and out for autumn or for summer. Still reckon they should have included like a spring one with like pink and white for spring blossom. They do those pieces in pink. Oh, I remember I looked on Bretlink and they didn't do all the pieces it's in those colours. Yeah. So, <laughs> and the thing is, it's like, it's a real pain changing them over as well. My like. Coming. Buy two, one was to I'm not buying two out of one set. <laughs> Someone already said to me, like, oh, now you need to buy another one and make it into the actor 1A, like I did with the Lego Ideas one. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's very cheap. I, I'm not made of money. <laughs> we get a few more donations, maybe. <laughs> no beef app is not me building. How are these girly hands? He always said I got girly hands. Says him. He's like the most feminine man I've ever seen in my life. If he is a man, I don't think he is. Is he female? He's a flea male. What are you, B Fab? You're a flea male. Uh Cracker, have you ever watched Agents of Shield? It's really good and it on Disney Plus. Uh I I watched the first two seasons of Agents of Shield. Just when like I gave up on it because I didn't like it. Came back to it because everyone said it got good. It did get good, and then I, I thought it went pants again, so I was like, I'm done. 
And the thing is, as much as they try making out that it was canon, the movies pretty much ignored everything that happened in the show. It was like a one-sided relationship. You know, the, the show would acknowledge what was happening in the movies, not the other way around. Plus, I feel like having Coulson alive kind of undermines the story in the original Avengers movie anyway, so... Yeah. I don't think it's canon anymore now, anyway. I think they've pretty much done away with... That does not look right. I don't know. No, that's that's correct, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there you go. No, I don't. On the other side, that side. What? You, it's this side. What are you talking about, woman? It's on this side. How is that possible? I don't know. That is not going like that, is it? Fine. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right, does it? I think you're lying to me. No. See. So that one. Ah. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah. No. That, is that good? That way? No. no I'm saying. Well, I think that's right. Well, I think I should put that piece on the thing. <laughs> it looks like it's right. Um, let's see, what was this? I have manly hands, but a female voice. People compare me to the likes of Beyonce, Ariana Grande, and Taylor Swift. Or Taylor Swift. Um, I know who one of those people are. <laughs> How do I become a mod? Not by asking, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I generally only make people mods if I know them. So, and that's mainly just so I know that they're not fake people. Why does that go in there? What? I swear this is not right. Okay, Ooh, that's why. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't give me all the pieces. Sorry. Squidman says to become a mod to make five hundred dollars to craggle. I mean, yeah, that too. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm so confused by this now. So that goes there. But what I don't get. Oh, okay. I do get it. That goes on there. Yeah, it's resting for now. I'm guessing that there is going to be something that goes on top that hooks all this together for yeah. the time being. It rests. Okay. But then it's got. What's really confusing is it's got that looks to be in line with that. But then with this, it can't be. Unless that's in wrong. Because look. So that's right. But on the picture, that's in line. So that and that are in line. What was the next page? I'm confused. Unless this is the angle. Could be the angle. Oh, Lego with their pesky angles. Because even if you pull that, that is not going to... Look, it's a push. I'm really confused. Wait a sec, is that... Oh, I got it. No. That doesn't go on that like that, does it? There we go. It's because it's... It goes on it. Oh, yeah. There you go. We fixed it. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> oh dear. So what happened here? Apparently I, I turned away from the chat and a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, Mahan, people make fake accounts of you because you are famous Jonathan 55, okay? Um, so unlike me, I don't need models. There's zero fake Mahans. Uh, what the hell? Did you know um, Krago made a mistake? Yeah, I made a mistake. Christopher Lloyd, let me be a mod, please. <laughs> if you if you ask to be a mod, you pretty much don't won't get made a mod. Uh, OMG, he just came in, in here to ask that question and then left. Oh dear, I didn't leave. Oh, what is going on? Uh, oh, we've got a donation. We have a donation from Sir Chepster for one pound. Thank you very much for the donation. I really appreciate it. Thank you. There's no message on there, but uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. 
Um, yes, Mahan, it took a lot of simping. I don't even know what's going on now. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Is there some sort of like battle happening? I'm just messing up my Lego set. Don't start arguing already. Uh, one five hundredth of the way there. Yep. As soon as there's a fake Mahan, I'll spam to you, mod me. Okay. I, I don't know. Joshua Silverster says, hey, I love the Hinsight sets, but all the stickers. Yeah, I'm not a fan of stickers. Lego Panda Guy, Craggle, what Marvel 2021 set are you most looking forward to? Um, I don't know. What Marvel 2021 sets are there? Do you know? I can't even think now. I, I have heard of some, but I'm drawing a blank. Uh, let me go and have a look. Oh, Strip says, yeah, wouldn't let me type a message. I'm too broke. Okay, well, I, I, I'll tell you what. I'll feature that message. There we go. Feature that one instead. <laughs> That's probably not the kind of message you want <laughs> featured, but... Uh, oh, dear. We have a, a donation. Oh, we said wrong one. <laughs> well, you're going to see that one as well. I want Craggle N hashtag DES. I want Craggle hash N hashtag Dez. News. You want N Dez. N Dez. N Dez. Mm. Oh, you want EastEnders? Dun 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 dun. There you go. I hate EastEnders too, but there you go. <laughs> Bfab Brickbuster coming out now. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Let me see what this. Scream man, we all do be Oh my god. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on. Okay, anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> all right, Phil Mitchell. Yeah. Let's carry on with the build, shall we? How long are we be going for anyway? Um We've been going for about almost two hours. I think we'll get to two hours and then we might end up wrapping things up then. Um or get to the end of this bag. Whatever comes first. End of this bag or Two hours, I guess. <laughs> Wait, okay. So besides Ghostbusters Afterlife, what 2021 films are you all looking forward to? Are you looking forward to uh, Wonder Woman 1984? Do you think that's actually going to come out on Christmas Day or do you think they're going to push it back again? I think they're going to push it back again, personally. I can't, I can't see it. I mean, I always get a bit confused when they release a film on Christmas Day anyway. I mean, the idea of going to the cinema on Christmas Day just seems balmy to me. Maybe Boxing Day, you know, you know, something like that maybe, but I don't get why you would go to the cinema on Christmas Day. I mean, it feels harsh making someone work in the cinema on Christmas Day as well. It's got to be a pretty thankless job, hasn't it, you know? I mean, I do know because I worked in the cinema when I was younger, and it definitely was a thankless job. Uh, where does this one go? Oh, I see it. Black Widow. Yeah, that... I have got a little bit more hyped up for that film recently because I kind of wasn't feeling the Marvel hype anymore. I just, I think, I don't know. It, nothing's really been exciting to me. And even Black Widow, it's going to be like a inter-equal, so it's going to be before, obviously, Endgame. And, yeah... I think I'm quite hyped to see. Um, oh my god! How have I forgotten his name? Oh my god! One of my favorite characters. Oh my god! David Harbour. How did I forget his name? David Harbour's Red Guardian. Um, I'm really excited to see that. I think he's going to be great. I think the white suit uh, the Black Widow has looks pretty cool from the comics. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that more than what I was originally, but I'm not massively, massively hyped for it. Uh, oh God, BFAB, Fifty Shades of Grey, the Christian version by Billy Graham 2021. Isn't like the guy called Christian in the original anyway? Is that his name? I don't know. You, you, you haven't read it, have you? No. no. <clears throat> when I used to work before in Sainsbury's, the women there used to talk about that book all the time. It was so annoying. That doesn't seem right. It is right. I'm just looking at it wrong. Uh, 
let's see. Apparently, Shrek four, Shrek four, five. Oh, Shrek five. Okay. There's a Shrek five coming out. Oh man, I loved Shrek one and two. Three was dreadful, and I quite enjoyed Shrek. Was it Forever After? It's basically it's a wonderful life, but with Shrek, wasn't it? Thought well, that was okay. Is it a reboot? You can be one to me of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> it won't let me send the word nude in donations. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I did Shrek 5 featuring the women of the Lego community. <laughs> wow, Beef have what have you been drinking today? Oh my god. Uh Joshua Silverstone, do you like Harry Potter? I do. I'm not a fan of the books, really. I've tried getting to them a few times. I'm just not a fan of JK Rowling's writing style, although I like the stories. Not a fan of JK Rowling, to be honest with you. Don't think anyone is in right now. All the stuff she's coming out with. But, uh, yeah, I do like the Harry Potter movies, and I like the Lego sets. And I love the Lego Harry Potter video game. Did you get the Nebulon B frigate from Greg Craggle? Uh, no, I didn't. It wasn't really a set that I was uh, I was massively interested in. So, no, I haven't got that set coming. I got the, um, the Wonder Woman and the Bespin Jewel sets. Um, and then after that, Greg was kind enough then to say that he was going to get me the Black Widow set as a belated birthday gift. So that's on its way. Which is really, really nice of him. <laughs> that was just, that set was a grower. When I first saw that set, I was like, nah, I don't need it. No, 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 I don't want it. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, I want the set. Come here. Come hither. And it was like, not going to happen. So Greg was kind enough to uh, to get it for me, and he's uh, sent it over. So when it arrives, I'll be doing a, a video on it, a big thank you video to him for getting that for me. Very, very kind of him. Uh, do, 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 do. No alcohol today. That's good. No alcohol today. Yes, be fab. Lay off the alcohol. And that includes drinking hand sanitizer. Don't do that. It's not good. Just ban beef fab and everything will be back to normal. <laughs> yeah. And uh, generic stud. I would make a good donkey for Shrek 5, let's be honest. I don't know. I haven't. I've actually, no. Have I seen generic stud space? Yeah, when he was on Greg's stream. Oh, yeah, when he was on Greg's stream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in all fairness, he has probably one of the ugliest minifig faces going on his logo. I mean, it's, it's the nose, isn't it? Yeah. It's just. <laughs> I imagine that's what like every uh, American thinks the British look like because they always think we got horrible noses and rancid teeth. BFAB is like one of the worst people going, oh, the British have horrible teeth. And yet, as I've said before, I've seen his teeth and it looks like basically a piano keys after Tom and Jerry's been at it. And then he goes and brushes his, t his teeth on a live stream as well. Like how many times now have we been like talking and all of a sudden then you, you hear like someone brushing their teeth and it's BFAB in his car brushing his teeth on his brake. <laughs> uh, Crackle could play Fiona for Shrek 5 what before or after the sunsets uh, who's a part of Brick Bros UK I don't even know lol British teeth are like two people going to a dance <laughs> <laughs> says you Fab. says you I don't know. I I always think that, you know, whilst Americans often have really white shiny teeth, they always seem to be a bit weird. Like they kind of go in like odd directions. Have you noticed that? Mm. And that like, their incisors seem a little bit more pointy than usual. They're vampires. <gasps> dun dun dun. The Americans are vampires. There you go. I'm going <laughs> how many viewers am I losing now because of that? We don't we don't think they're vampires. No. We just think beef apps weird. Uh, pe some people say they never thought their hands would consume more alcohol than their mouth. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, Daddy Brick, I shouldn't be watching this. It might make me want this set. Yes, go out and get this set. It is awesome. I'm building a proton pack right now. I didn't even realize that until I looked down and saw the next piece. <gasps> I'm building a proton pack. Mrs. Craggle, mm -hmm. I'm building a proton pack. Very nice. That was like really unenthusiastic. <laughs> I mean, the instructions for this proton pack aren't very good, though, are they? Like, where does that bit go? There's a bit of a What's that bit? It's oh, I just want that one again. Okay, I got it. This is for the gunner seat, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's a printed piece. That is actually technically a new print. Wait a Come on, focus. Because the design, I don't think, is new. It's the same one that was on the previous proton packs, but the previous piece wasn't flat. It was the, the sort of rounded top. It's the one that you often see on the underside of cars used to like hold plates together, whereas this one is actually flat, which is actually, yeah, it's more accurate, really. Oh, God, it's just, I was going to say it's different to the one on Pete. Oh, that, that one's a different one again. On the brickhead. Yeah, that's way less detailed and more cartoonish, and yet it's the same size. Look at that. That's so weird. Anyway. <laughs> the woodshop teacher says, hey, cut the craggle. Hey, everybody. Mahan says, the Americans are B-fab. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Brother Brick says, also watching Naked Attraction. Well, that's your own mistake. Uh, does Mrs. Craggle share your Proton Pack enthusiasm? I think so. I mean, I don't know if I've mentioned this before on here, but I am actually building a Proton Pack uh, replica, like a full-scale Proton Pack. Um, it's gone on hold for a little bit because um, I was waiting for some parts to come over from the US due to COVID that got massively delayed. But, yeah, and you've been helping with that a lot, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been my uh, my right hand lady, my left hand lady. I'm just gonna be wearing that shoe, aren't we? Yeah, we're actually planning on wearing the proton pack when we get married. Well, when we have our wedding photos, aren't yeah, not yeah. at the church. <laughs> yeah. I I said about I got jokingly I should wear it with my suit and look like how the Ghostbusters do when they're in the courtroom scene in Ghostbusters Two. And then the missus was like, "Well, no, I'm gonna wear it with my wedding dress." I was like, "What?" She's like, "Yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna wear it with my wedding dress." I was like. Okay, <laughs> and that is why I'm marrying you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. should do updates on that in Crackle's Den. Yeah, maybe. I'm I'm fair bit along, but I've still got a bit more to do. I need to do the it's ghost trap as well. Oh. Yeah, I'm working on the electronics moment. Uh, let's see. Oh, shy time is my time is here. He says, "Hey, fam." I thought it was "What up, fam?" Did he change his catchphrase? It was "What up, fam?" Wasn't it? Or was it "Hey, fam"? Yeah, it's a bit of both. It can't be both. You have one catchphrase. You don't have I'll be back and I'll be back shortly or I'll be back, I won't be back. It's I'll be back. So you have one catchphrase. Mm. Okay, she's she's pulling her face at me now. Uh, Mahan, hashtag boycott Crackle's Den. What? Why are we boycotting Crackle's Den? Remember Greg said? Because obviously you can't watch it because you wanted to buy stuff. Oh, yeah. He said, yeah. He said he doesn't want to watch Crackles then because he might end up getting to Funko Pops. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of Funko Pops <laughs> on there. I didn't intend for it to be just a Funko Pops channel, but at the moment that is kind of what I'm collecting the most of. There will be other stuff on there as well. Uh, I also want to show some stuff that I already have for my collection. At the moment, it's been mostly haul videos. And I've got a couple more haul videos on the way. Um, I'm sorry if you're wondering where Crackle's Den has gone. I have gone a little bit dark on that at the moment. The uh, There's been some stuff happening on Cut the Crackle that I've had to do. And also real work, real life and work and stuff have gotten in the way recently. But there will be some new content on Monday for Crackle's Den. Why is that not going on? Uh, what was that? Is that right? It's supposed to be the other way. Oh, yeah, that's right. That looks bad, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think I've done this a little bit backwards. Maybe. 
it's funny how much effort they put into making the proton packs and then the proton, you know, the particle throw is just that. It's like, really? That's the best you could do? Okay, I forgive you. Simple, but practice. Yeah, it kind of works. I just, they don't do a lot of good. It's like the Playmobil um, particle throwers are really good molds, but because of the way the Playmobil figures are, they don't actually hold them by the places that you would hold a uh, particle thrower. They they hold them um, on this kind of like, I guess like a gun handle. So I'm guessing. Wait, does that? I feel like that's supposed to come out, isn't it? I feel like I've not done that wrong. It is showing the next page. Let's have a look. That's, no. <laughs> That's got to be able to come out already, surely, though, if you go away from the mechanism. Oh. oh, do you pull that? Oh! You... No. Did you see that? Did you see that? Get ready, guys. <laughs> it spins cool. round as well. That's cool. <sighs> That's cool. I like it. Yeah, that's da -da 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 -da. Here is the problem though, when you put a minifig on from like the Ghostbusters, they're gonna fly out. It's like... not a minifig scale! <laughs> that's cool. I like that. <clears throat> I like it a lot. Well, that's the end of bag two. Oh my god, we've only done two bags. I've done way too much talking on the stream. Bag three? No, I think we're gonna wrap things up there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Derek Stead says, Crago, I just met a guy who's stolen your name. Sense of humor and Welshness called Craggles Den. You should sue him or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think the guy behind Craggles Den is Brick Bros UK, says Mahan. Oh, dear. I just saw BFAB say for some reason, I swear I'm straight generic stud lol. Is, is BFAB coming on to generic stud? Generic strud? Generic stud now? I don't know. No, I think it's uh, and Shine says, because Craggle Den is a dangerous place that influences us to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seth Bland says, your proton pack out of Lego. No, it's going to be um, like a proper pack build. You've probably seen like people have them. It will look exactly like, or as close as possible to the ones that you've seen in the movies. Um, Every proton pack that I've seen prop builders make, though, is always slightly unique. Uh, I'm mainly making mine based on the hero props from Ghostbusters 1, but it will have a few of my own like alterations. So I will have a couple of elements from GB2, and I've also got the, the change in uh, lights and sounds from the video game pack. So if you ever played Ghostbusters the video game, the proper video game, the one that was basically... Ghost as, uh, Ghostbusters free before Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, that and that one, you had the Proton Pack had like four different modes by the end of the game, and uh, they're gonna, I'm gonna have those modes at least light and sound wise in my pack as well. So that's so cool. It's cool, isn't it? That's very really cool. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <clears throat> but yeah, I think we're gonna wrap things up there. Um, thank you so much to everyone for watching, and. Um, I need to think of like a good sign off for doing like live streams. I'm really bad at this. Do you smell you later? Said <laughs> smell you later. Mm -hmm. This is the 1994. <laughs> I'm not saying smell you later. Um, I'm just gonna say thank you everyone for for joining. Um, I hope you've had fun. I certainly have. I'm looking forward to building the rest of this um, probably tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until next time. Bye.